So my name is Heather McMullen and I'm a lecturer in Global Public Health at Queen Mary University of London and my work explores the intersection between climate change, the environment and sexual and reproductive health rights and justice. I, I think there's no climate justice without bodily autonomy because at the most fundamental level if people don't have control over their bodies, if they can't make the decisions of, about what they want to do with their bodies, then they can't react, respond and adapt to the climate crisis. So for me, there is no climate justice without reproductive justice, without gender justice, without racial justice, without bodily autonomy, and all of these things are inter interlinked and interconnected. And we also need to make sure that we focus on people being able to make the choices that best suit them in their individual personal circumstances. And those very much intersect with, you know, the important topics of life around sexuality, reproduction, kinship, family, um, you know, relationships and onwards. And so at the intersection of sexual and reproductive rights and health, we see sort of numerous ways that they come together. And, a lot, and in many ways, they touch on some of the most intimate aspects of our existence, which is maybe also why we really struggle um, to have them sort of featured and highlighted inside climate policy and in health policy, even and all policy really, because they also tend to be some of the most stigmatized and um, controversial rights as well. So I, I would say that over like the past five years or so, we've really seen an increase in the, in the thinking and action around sexual and reproductive rights and health. Um, we have a very strong gender uh, advocacy and, and gender lobby within the climate space. And increasingly, we're seeing that lobby also pick up aspects of sexual and reproductive rights and health. And as the health and climate space evolves um, and, and comes together as well, then we start to think about health inequalities and health justice. And there really is no health justice without thinking about things like maternal health, without thinking about things like access to health services in times of crisis, without thinking about people's sexual orientations, gender identities, sexual characteristics and expressions. You know, we can't leave any of these things behind. We need the full range of sexual and reproductive rights and health to be considered. There's been a historic focus on maybe aspects of family planning or on reproduction, sometimes linked to population narratives that really aren't fit for purpose. What we want to see is people thinking about all of the different ways that, that people's sexual rights, sexual health, reproductive rights, reproductive health, and all that comes with it, come together and interacts with the crises, the crises that we face at the moment, with the climate crisis being one of the most severe and fundamental.